I want to start by reminding you of a little trig, and, 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 and in particular looking at a list of trig properties which maybe you've forgotten, which have to do with uh, this function right here, cosine n theta. And in particular, I want to ask, uh, what do these look like for specific values of n? So for instance, we know, you know, we can start off with the with the trivial example, which is if you have n equal one, well, okay, yeah, that guy right there, that's just cosine theta, easy enough. Uh, what about two, n equals two? Well, for n equals two, we have cosine of two theta, and this right here can be expressed as two times cosine squared theta minus one. Okay, you know, you've probably, you've probably seen this before. Uh, what about three, n equals three? Cosine of three theta. You might not be so familiar with this one, but this right here has a nice form just like these up here. This is four times cosine cubed theta minus three times cosine theta. Okay, so a little bit of a pattern's emerging here. Uh, we're saying that as n increases uh, in integer intervals, so for, for one, two, three, and, and presumably so on and so forth, we're getting on the right-hand side a polynomial in just cosine of theta. And so here for cosine two theta, we have a polynomial here. It's in, in cosine theta, we have two quantity cosine squared theta minus one. That's a polynomial in cosine theta. Same for cosine three theta right here. We have four cosine cubed theta minus three cosine theta. And that's a polynomial in cosine theta. And if we keep doing this, what you find is that uh, you keep getting these polynomials on the right-hand side, these polynomials in terms of cosine theta. And so because of that, uh, what people have done is they've given a name to all of these poly to, to these polynomials right here. And they call them Chebyshev polynomials, T sub n, of the first kind. So Chebyshev polynomials of the first kind, here denoted T sub n. And so what, what does this actually mean? It means that these T n's right here, let's write a couple of them out and see what they look like. So, you know, we, we can read it off. So we know that T sub one, well, T sub one of, T sub one of x, you know, we don't have to call it cosine theta. If we just look at T sub one of x, what's that gonna be? Well, it's just x, right? It's just, uh, it's just cosine theta on the right-hand side, so x. Well, what about t sub two? t sub two of x, well, let's look at cosine two theta. That's equal to two cosine squared, so x squared minus one. And what, what about three theta? We can do the same thing. t sub three of x, it's equal to what, four x cubed minus three x. And so, and so we see that these, these Chebyshev polynomials of the first kind right here just correspond exactly to uh, these polynomials here that we have on the right-hand side when we're looking at cosine of n theta re-expressed just in terms of cosine. Okay, um, so that, that's the main idea behind Chebyshev polynomials of the first kind. And, and here we started off by looking at cosine n theta, but I mean, you might ask, well, what about sine of n theta? Can't we do the same type of thing here? And you can do something similar and I'll do that here. So let's start looking at sine of n theta. What, what do our trig properties look like here when we try and try and do this out? Well, let's see. So we have uh, sine, I mean, let's start in the same way. So sine of one times theta, that's of course just sine theta. We have sine of two times theta. And that right there, that's equal to cosine theta, sine theta. Okay, uh, let's keep going and see what happens. Uh, sine of three theta, what's that equal to? Well, we can express sine of three theta as four times cosine squared theta minus one times sine of theta. And I'll do just one more, so that way this is super clear. Sine of four theta, that's equal to eight cosine cubed theta minus four cosine theta, all times sine theta. So there's some similarities and some differences between these two cases. Uh, the first similarity is that in both cases, we have what looks like a polynomial in cosine theta emerging on this right-hand side. Here we just have one, here we have 
a single cosine, here we have you know, cosine squared minus one, and, and so on. But in each of these cases, we have this extra sine theta multiplying, multiplying that polynomial in cosine theta. Uh, and so this right here, it's a little different from this because we can't just rewrite all of these in terms of a polynomial in, cos in, in, in terms of sine theta. But we can represent these, we can represent this for arbitrary n, sine of n theta, as some polynomial, which, is, which I'm going to call u sub n minus 1 of cosine theta times sine theta. And this, so this u sub n right here is called the Chebyshev polynomial of the second kind. Second kind because you know, we, we have our first kind over here and then the second time kind is referring to these polynomials in cosine that are the coefficients of sine theta for sine and theta. And, and the way that some people like to write, write this and, and the way that I prefer to think of this is that u sub n of cosine theta it's equal to, I mean, just, just solve for it, it's going to be sine of n plus 1 theta divided by sine theta. So that's sort of a nice way of defining it. And, and one, one small thing to note is just that the, the index here is, is shifted a little bit. Um, so sine n theta doesn't correspond to the nth Chebyshev polynomial, it corresponds to it being shifted by 1. And the reason for that is that uh, that's being done in order so that this n right here corresponds to the highest order term in this polynomial right here. So because we're multiplying everything here by sine theta, the order of our polynomials in cosine theta are one less than this value of n right here. And so that's why that's why this n gets shifted. So it's just a convention, but it's a convention that uh, makes it easy for you to look at your Chebyshev polynomial of the second kind and determine what the order of it is. And the last thing I'll do is write out just a couple of these, a uh, couple of these UNs right here. So we have U1 of X, that's going to be equal to what? Well, it's going to be equal to uh, this one right here, so that's just X. We have U2 of X, that's going to be equal to this guy right here, so 4X squared minus 1. Then U3 of X, and that's going to be equal to uh, this guy, and so that's going to give us 8x cubed minus 4x. Okay, great. Um, I think I think I'll probably stop here. the The only thing that I'm going to say now, and this is probably one of the most important facts about Chebyshev polynomials, is that uh, cosine and I mean, so really, what we're just doing here is we're rewriting cosine of n theta and sine of n theta in terms of you know in terms of these funny polynomials. But we actually already know a whole lot about cosine n theta and sine of n theta because these these functions right here show up primarily in Fourier series, and we know a lot about Fourier series. Uh, we know we know about their orthogonality. Uh, we we know you know we know a lot about their properties, and because of because of the relationship between Chebyshev polynomials and Fourier series, there's going to be a lot of parallels. And in fact, a lot of the proofs that I'm going to do, and, and a lot of the uh, a lot of the properties I'm going to look at, are going to start from saying, "All right, well, let's look at something we know from Fourier series, and then convert it into a Chebyshev polynomial and see what happens." That's going to cover pretty much um, the vast majority of how how most of the properties for Chebyshev polynomials come about. So that's a great way, a great intuitive way of thinking about Chebyshev polynomials is starting from Fourier series and then converting to Chebyshev polynomials. Uh, but I, I think I'll stop there. In the next video, I'll start going into some of those parallels. So I hope to see you there.